calling to order the meeting of the Arlington Select Board for Monday, May 3rd, 2021. As a preliminary matter, this is Select Board Chair Steve DeCourcy. Permit me to confirm that all members and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Diane Mahan? Yes, thank you. John Hurd? Yes. Len Diggins? Yes. Eric Helmuth? Yes. Staff, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Adam Chapdelaine? Yes. Doug Heim? Yes. And Board Administrator Ashley Meyer is participating remotely. Tonight's meeting of the Arlington Select Board is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020, which encourages and allows open meetings of state agencies and local governments to be conducted remotely in order to mitigate transmission of COVID-19 virus. The governor's order, which you can find posted with agenda materials on the town's website for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Before we begin, permit me to offer a few notes. First, this meeting is being conducted via Zoom, is being recorded, and is also being simultaneously broadcast on ACMI. Persons wishing to join the meeting by Zoom may find information on how to do so on the town's website. Persons participating by Zoom are reminded that they may be visible to others and that if you wish to participate, you are asked to provide your full name in the interest of developing a record of the meeting. And further, all participants are advised that people may be listening who do not provide comment and those persons are not required to identify themselves. Both Zoom participants and persons watching on ACMI can follow the posted agenda materials also found on the town's website using the Novus Agenda platform. Finally, each vote will be taken by roll call. I'll now turn to the first item on the agenda, which is the approval of sale of $1.2 million water bond to the Massachusetts Water Resources Authority for Local Water System Assistance Program. Uh, Phyllis Marshall, treasurer, is gonna make the presentation. Is, is Ms. Marshall with us? Yes. Okay, good evening. Good evening. Uh, thank you very much for putting me on your agenda this evening. I um, am here to talk with you about uh, uh, bond issue that we have an opportunity for with the um, MWRA to um, reconstruct our water mains in various locations in the town. And it's a interest-free loan of $1.2 million with a 10-year um, schedule for payments. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll now turn it over to the members for any questions or comments. Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I move approval and no questions or comments. Thank you. Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will second Mr. Helmut's motion and um, just, I think, one question um, for our treasurer. Um, I understand this will be summer, fall of 2021. Um, will we be posting the affected area or areas on the town website? Will we notify those areas? Um, and, and I don't know if it's for the, the treasurer or the manager to tell me the answer to that. Mr. Chair, if, if you sure. please. Uh, Ms. Mott, yeah, a absolutely. The uh, water and sewer division of DPW will both post the um, proposed work areas in the Excuse me. Sorry, I muted myself. Uh, and then with uh, several weeks notice, we'll flyer the neighborhood to let them know that the work will be starting. I'm sorry. Can you can you say it again? I heard DPW water something will yeah, post. Sorry, hit my, hit, my, hit my mute. Sorry. Uh, yeah, the DPW water sewer division uh, will make sure that uh, the project areas for the year are posted on a map on the website. And then before that work commences with probably... Um, uh, a week, maybe, a two, I, I think we'd aim for two weeks notice, we'll flyer the neighborhood so they know the work will start okay. and whether or not there'll be any water impacts on them. Okay, thank you. And um, to Ms. Marshall, is this a one-time project or is this a continuation of a project or the beginning of one and we'll be coming back for uh, future MWRA work in different areas? 
this is the second one since I've been here. I don't know the full scope of it. Um, so I would have to get back to you on that information. I, um, I don't know if there's an article on this town meeting or not, um, but it has been an opportunity that MWRA has made available to us. And um, as you all know, the interest fee aspect is notable. Mr. Chair, I, I can add that the, the water main replacement itself is a recurring annual project, Ms. Mahan. The manner in which we pay for it uh, is usually through the MWRA. Sometimes it's interest free, sometimes it's low interest. We sometimes might get lucky and it'll be a grant, although it's usually a loan. Um, and and, and it, so the, it'll vary exactly how we're doing the borrowing, but the, the work itself is an annual recurring expense for water sewer capital investment. Um, thank you to the treasurer town manager and thank you, Mr. Chair. No more questions. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Uh, no questions. 0% interest sounds good to me all day, so. Uh, Mr. Diggins. Yes, I agree. Other than a grant, 0% is, is, is pretty good. So we'll take that. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, I feel the same way, 0%. Uh, let's get to the vote. So we have a, a motion by Mr. Helmuth, second, seconded by Mrs. Mahan. Attorney Hein. Mr. Hurt. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Marshall. Thank you very much. Okay. Items will now move to the consent agenda. Items three and four. Um, I don't know, is, is Mason Conway here with us yep. uh, this evening? Yeah, Jimmy Conway. Yes, he is okay. fine. So would you like me to promote him now? Yes. I think he's live from the baseball field. So I'm, I'm going to take item four out of order ahead of item three uh, because of the uh, circumstances where Mr. Conway and his son Mason are right now. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we're 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 taking an inning off from our baseball game. <laughs> All right, we'll try to be quick. Is that you there, sure. Mason? Hi. Hi. Yeah. No. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, what I want to do is I want to turn it over to Mr. Hurd, and we want to read something for you and uh, uh, and, and uh, make some comments. But thank you so much for your heroism, and uh, I'll turn it over to Mr. Hurd for this item. All right. Thank you. Good to see you again, Mason. Um, yeah, so Mason was honored by the Allenton Police Department and Allenton Fire Department on Friday for some uh, acts of hero young heroism that he did on March 5th of this year. And I know Mason from the hockey rink, and I said, Mason, in addition to being, from what I know, Mason, he's a great hockey player, he's a great athlete, but he's also a super nice kid. He always says hi to the other kids when he sees them, parents when he sees them, he goes out of his way to help others. He goes and helps the instructional and the developmental kids and passes on his knowledge of the game. So it's certainly not surprising that Mason did this. So we do have a proclamation here. It was written by me, so I apologize if the uh, prose isn't top notch. But. Whereas Mason Conway is a third grade student at the Hardy School in Arlington, Massachusetts, living in the East Arlington neighborhood of town. And whereas on March 5th, 2021, Mason was sitting in his dining room on his remote learning Zoom call. And he noticed smoke coming from the porch of his neighbor's house on Waldo Road. And whereas in response, Mason jumped into action, realizing the danger to his neighbors. He ran outside and knocked on his neighbor's front door, notifying them to call the Arlington Fire Department. And whereas, due to Mason's quick thinking and bravery, the Arlington Fire Department was able to extinguish the fire and prevent further damage to his neighbor's home. Now, therefore, be it resolved that we, the members of the select board, hereby acknowledge and honor Mason for his bravery and maturity for his heroic actions on March 5th, 2021. Keep up the great work, Mason. That is signed by the five members of the select board. Thank I you. To approve this proclamation. Great. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, Mr. Diggins? Great job, Mason. And oh. look forward to seeing you on this board or, or some other 
uh, important and useful board in our, or committee in Arlington at some point. You're getting a great start. Thank you. Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mason, you know, what makes Arlington such a great town is that so many people are good neighbors. And you, my young friend, have been a very good neighbor. Well done. Thank you. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, first, I don't know if there was a second to Mr. Hurd. If there wasn't, I'll second it. If not, I'll third, fourth, and fifth it. Um, at first, I'd say to Mason, uh, when I moved to Arlington, my first school was also Hardy School. Um, and I got a lot of uh, my desire, my reason for wanting to give back to the town um, because the town had been so good to me. So you taking the actions that you did um, not only talks about how well your school community um, has supported you and helped guide you this way, but more importantly, your family, mom, dad, and I think you have a brother. Um, a Logan. Cody back there. Cool. We'll see him sometimes, I'm sure in the future. Um, they're certainly doing a great job. So great job, mom and dad. And, and to uh, Martin, I would say, uh, just keep doing what you're doing. Um, if, if you live in a town and you, you know you love the town or if it's a city, um, try to do whatever you can like you did. And I wanna tell you just from a personal level, I am so thankful um, when Mr. Hurd spoke about um, you helping out kids you know, with special needs and developmental disabilities, because I have that personally in my family. And let me tell you, those kids or young adults, um, the people they respond to are people that they feel the same empathy, the same feelings back to them that they feel comfortable with, that they feel like are genuine. Um, so that says a lot to you and your character. So just keep doing what you're doing. Um, Whatever you do in the future, or your brother, um, just tell you guys or mom and dad, let me know and I'd, I'd be happy to support it. And, and thank you for being such a great citizen before you can even vote. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, and I, I just wanna echo what the other members said, Mason, but first I wanna ask you, how, how's the baseball game going tonight? Pretty good. I think that we're winning right now. Good, no way to go. Well, thank you so much for, for your heroism and the, your real hero. And um, I know they do a great job at the Hardy School. And as Mrs. Mahan said, you have a great family there with you. So keep doing what you're doing. And, and thank you so much for joining us tonight. Mr. Chair, if I can just add on the baseball line, both myself and Mason's dad, Jimmy, were both part of the, uh, in different years, the town champion winning Myrak, the uh, legacy that we used to have. Lots of success on the Myrak team. <laughs> Many, many years ago, though. <laughs> uh, okay. Well, thank you, Mr. Hurry. That's that's twice, I think. Um, yeah, it's, it's a th thank you for that. So, um, Mr. Chapterlin, did you want to add anything? I just, if you don't mind, Mr. Chair, sure. um, I used to see uh, Mason and Logan, and they both played with Pearl at Waldo many, many uh, a day. Uh, so I just wanted to say congratulations and hi, and it's really great to see you guys doing well. Great. And uh, Attorney Hyam? Not to vote if you want to say anything. We'll, we'll get to that in a second. I'll just echo what everybody said. Um, great job. Good eagle eyes. You, you, you must be a good batter if you can spot uh, spot trouble coming. So keep it up. Nice work. Thank you. Great. great. Thank you. So so we have a motion by Mr. Hurd, I believe seconded by Mrs. Mahan. So I will now turn it over to Attorney Hein for a vote. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Diggins. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. It's an unanimous vote. Great. Thank you very much and um, good luck with the game tonight. And again, thank you for joining us this evening and, and for everything that you've done there, Mason. Thank you. Okay. And thank you to your family as well, your brother and your parents. Thank you for the recognition and thank you, John, for uh, your support on Friday with the fire department it was a special day and we appreciate that. Yep, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great. Okay, so we will now, within the consent agenda, we'll move to the item three, uh, minutes of meeting, April 26, 2021. 
Um, so, uh, Mr. Diggins. No approval of the minutes. Mr. Helmuth. I'll second that motion. Mrs. Mahan. I don't know if you have any questions, comments. No questions, thank you. Okay, Mr. Hurd. No comments. Okay, uh, Attorney Hine, we have a motion that's been made in second and seconded for approval of the minutes. Mr. Hurd. Yes. Mr. Dayens. Yes. Mr. Helmet. Yes. Mrs. Mahan. Yes. Mr. DeCourcy. Yes. Unanimous vote. Great, thank you very much. Uh, and then we'll move on to item number five for approval, Council on Aging designee appointment to replace Joseph Curl. Um, I put this on, I, I, I think this is probably part of the subcommittee assignment process that will be undergoing um, probably a little bit later this spring, but we did receive a letter from Ms. Shaw, the executive director of the Council on Aging, asking or requesting that we name a new liaison now. So I put this ahead of the rest of the process. I did want to just point out to members, I'm hoping within the next week or two to distribute the list of committee assignments from this past year. And then we will have a, an agenda item to um, discuss um, new assignments and, 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 and that process. But for tonight, we'll just do the Council on Aging. So what I was going to do is just put it out there. Um, I know people are involved in a number of different assignments um, on this one. Mr. Caro informs me that the liaison typically attends the meetings on, on the Council on Aging. Um, so just if anybody has any comments, questions, um, and then I'll, I'll, uh, I can make a decision on the, um, on, the, on the appointment either tonight or after the meeting. Um, so I'll start with uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, I have no questions or comment. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Diggins? Uh, this is a, 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 I really do want to get to know this group more. Uh, I, 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 unless we do some reassignments, I just don't have the bandwidth now, uh, but but um, if um, someone uh, takes it for a while, maybe like maybe a year or so, and I'd be happy to pick up or, and I'll certainly be happy to back anyone up because um, this is this is an important group. I've worked with um, Ms. Shah you know, on the Sustainable Transportation Plan Advisory Committee, and she's a wonderful person. And I've met, of course, a lot of the people uh, who the Council of Aging, Aging serves in um, important, vital part of the community. Yep, no, that, that's fine. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth, any comments? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I know I'm strong feelings about it. I think you know I echo Lynn's thoughts that it's it's a great group. Uh, I will also happily defer to uh, to Mr. Diggins or any other member uh, who feels uh, that this is something they'd like to do. Um, and and also Lynn, if you you know if you feel like um, if you really if this is really interesting, you want to contemplate maybe um, I don't want to say trade, but you know but you know that you could understanding that maybe one of the, your commitments would would come off the off the table. Um, you know. We, you, maybe the chair would contemplate that as well. So I would say if you're really interested, um, you know, I'm happy to help that or I'm happy, happy to take Joe's place um, or not. Okay, all right, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I um, actually had a discussion with the chair today because as anal OCD that I am as vice chair, I try to <laughs> check in and make sure we go over things. And um, I agree and this is a very important position. Um, you all are aware of my platter uh, in terms of my family and, and others uh, in the subcommittee assignments, which I've never had so many, I think I have three um, that I volunteered for. So this would not be something um, that I could do. And I guess I would say to the chair, maybe if um, for further polling conversations with um, the two people that, uh, my two colleagues that seem willing to sort of be back up. I don't mean to throw this on Mr. DeCourcy, um, but I would also ask you to, um, since you had definitely have two people willing to um, be back up for you and I'll leave it to the chair to make the decision. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Yeah, I wanted to give everybody an opportunity to talk. What, what I've, I'm gonna do is I'll take the position as liaison to the Council on Aging. I will distribute the list to the members 
of other committees and it may not be the next meeting, but it will probably be by the end of May, then we can revisit it. But I know this was an important work that uh, Mr. Kerr was doing and, and I would I may come off a couple of committees that, that I was on as part of the uh, reassignment process. So I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. I don't think we need a vote on this. I think I just wanted to present this to the board given it's unusual to get a specific request. So I wanted to put that on. So I'll take that and I'll add that to the list that we send out. So with that, um, I'd like to move on to item number six, which is a discussion of return of meetings to the select board chambers. And this has come out of different discussions that we've had. Um, I actually was in the uh, town, town hall last week uh, talking with Ms. Maher about looking at the chamber and, and seeing if there's a way that uh, we can think about trying to, to come back inside at least with the members, perhaps with Mr. Chapdelaine and, and Attorney Heim, and then transition as, as we go forward to, to having more public participation, but also gives us a chance to have remote participation within the chamber itself. And I wanted to put it out for discussion. What I'm thinking is we do, this could happen perhaps after town meeting and certainly not in the month of May, maybe the month of June, if we can pull it together. I'd like to do it no later than July, if we could, but that's subject to um, what, the, what the other members feel. So um, I'd like to start with Mrs. Mahan on, on this. Um, um, thank you, Mr. Chair. And I have had conversations today with the chair about this. Um, and one of the things, um, I don't know that anyone, I'm not trying to get into anyone's medical history or HIPAA or anything like that. Um, I have my first dose, second one by the end of the month. Um, but one of the things that I discussed with the chair, um, since we have the MMA president uh, in one of these picture frames here, um, it, as well as I was not volunteering myself to work with the chair, um, I think one of my other colleagues um, would definitely bring a lot to it. But I don't know if um, I mentioned to the chair, um, instead of doing trial by fire, if either the Mass Municipal Association, MMA, has sort of boilerplate info in terms of reopening a board council meeting uh, legally in terms of Zoom access, um, what's required of that, and or perhaps um, if it's already happened that there's been a um, MSSA Mass Selectman Association um, webinar on Zoom at your board or council meetings. If not, maybe that could be an upcoming one and or maybe there's some materials already available um, that just kind of, you know, give some framework so that, you know, the chair and whomever else who's not me, <laughs> whomever else uh, amongst my colleagues, just kind of gives them something to uh, start off from there. So um, I don't know if the chair or the town manager, I, I didn't mean to pull you both in, but I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Yeah, I, I just ask uh, Mr. Chapdelaine if, if you are, are starting to see that with other communities in terms of um, getting back into or already back into the chambers, if there's any guidance on that too, in terms of how you work with the remote participation aspect of it. I would say there there is no uh, sort of comprehensive or formal guidance because we're all learning it at the same time. Um, there is one community that's been back in session and done hybrid for quite a while, and that's Franklin. Uh, I did get to see a presentation by their town manager uh, about a month ago. So they, uh, and he's willing to let us come down and tour their chambers. They have a town council. It's so that in some ways it's more complicated because they have a bigger body they have to host. So uh, I think there's at least one, and there's probably a few others that we could lean upon their uh, early wisdoms they've gained and try to mimic that um, to make it work. Okay, great. Uh, then thank you, Mr. Chapdelaine. Um, did you have any other questions or comments, Mrs. Mahan? No, um, just Godspeed, Mr. Chair, on <laughs> getting us back to whatever normal is and whenever it is. So thank you so much. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Hurd? Yep. Um, so I'm definitely supporter of it. You know, I think it's starting to be time that we need to start looking at getting back into in-person type of events as um, we get to where we are with the vaccinations and whatnot. So, I mean, I think 
I don't, I'm not the tech guy on, on the board, but I certainly just would, inv I think there's ways that we can certainly keep ourselves safe in the chamber and we can figure out how to do that. Um, you know, we all have iPads when we're in there. So I, I would imagine there's a way, at least initially, just to have this platform in front of us and then for non-public I, board items, we just talk about them like we usually do. And and for when it becomes to public participation, we just all pick up our iPads and we'll be logged in and we can do, we can, anyone that wants to participate remotely can do so. And I think, I mean, those are the guidelines, but kind of the, the certainly detail, devil's in the detail, but I know I think that's kind of a plan that we go off of and then we can work out the kinks and but I think it's just some, it is time to start looking at this and start moving towards back towards in person meetings. So Great. I'm on board thank for the board. Thank, thank, thank you, Mr. Hurd. And before I turn it, there was Mr. Diggins and Mr. Helmuth clearly are the most technic, technically savvy of members of, of the board here. And, and what I was thinking. Um, and, and, and I'm willing to have further discussion, but is I want to put a smaller group together for a meeting with the town manager, perhaps the facilities, um, a deputy town manager at facilities, Mr. Feeney, and a, a representative from ACMI. And I was thinking where Mr. Helmuth hasn't been assigned to any committees yet, that might be a good first meeting to, to have. And we try to do something over the next couple of weeks, but I did want to uh, Colin, Mr. Diggins, yet uh, next for his uh, comments on, um, first of all, coming back to the chamber and, and any ad ad additional comments he may have on that. Sure. You know, I guess my feelings are, it, oops, hold on a second. You can probably see me, but I can't see you. It's a little disturbing. There we go. Um, so um, I, I guess my, my feelings are, it, as long as the recommendation is that people wear masks while indoors, it, um, it, it, I'm a little uneasy about it. I mean, you know, I'm, uh, it, I'll do it. You know, uh, I think we should always allow people's option in to not be there if they don't want to, um, uh, and to wear masks if they want to, uh, it, and and so, um, uh, and I think um, Mr. Hurd is on the right track with the, uh, the way to come at it with respect to technology. So, so, um, so he knows what he's talking about. You know, so so that's my only comment, you know, but but um, I'm game for whatever. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Helmuth. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, yeah, I, I like this too. I think not, not only um, because it will be easier to be a collaborative body uh, in person, but you know, also I think thinking back to our recent discussion in town meeting on article 20, that I think select board has a real opportunity to, to take some leadership and, and just be, because we meet so often and represent so much of the town that it'd be a really good thing for us to, to strike out and on our end and, and, uh, and find out kind of wait into this, you know, and, and see exactly what the technology and procedural and health uh, issues are gonna be. So, you know, I, I, I like that for, for all those reasons. Um, and, and I do think that you know that the, the study will necessarily need to, of course, consult our health department and, and other guidance about and consider vaccination status and not and, and masks and all of that, as Mr. Diggins suggests. And I think with respect to this technology, uh, I, my guess is that we will find it to be a little more complex than we guessed. Uh, probably more along the issues of, of audio. Um, and if you think about some some experiences we've had with multiple computers and virtual town meeting, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, <laughs> but those are surmountable, you know. And I think I'd be really I, I am willing to serve if, if the if <laughs> colleagues uh, would would like to uh, ask me to do that. And um, yeah, I think to Mr. Chaplain's uh, comments, I think it would be really helpful to go out to the uh, municipality and I'm blanking on the name um, that was mentioned just to uh, Franklin. Thank you to. Um, See, see, just see for ourselves kind of what they did and talk it through with their tech people and uh, and see what we can learn. And I think that we can not only get ourselves back in the chamber, you know, pending everyone's comfort, pending health sign off, pending technology, uh, but we can also help pave the way for, for additional hybrid and remote participation for other bodies in the town in the future. 
Great. Thank you very much, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, yeah, and, and I'm reminded of what Mr. Dunn said um, when we spoke about this, that, that the select board could be the, he called it the lab for returning to an environment where you're both in person and, and working remotely. And, and to Mr. Diggins point, absolutely. If we're in a situation um, where a member isn't comfortable being in the chamber, then we will do it through a hybrid or, or we'll discuss whether we all go back or, 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 or none of us go back. But what I'd like to do is I can talk with Mr. Helmuth, I'll talk to Mr. Chapdelaine and try to get a meeting together within the next week or so, then come back to the board. Um, our, our next um, meeting is May 10th. It won't be by May 10th. It'll maybe be the one after that where we can hopefully have some more information and, and select a target date. So. This is another one tonight where there's a discussion. I don't think we need a, a vote on it, um, but we will proceed and I'll put it on for a subsequent agenda item for further discussion. And, and we will vote as a board when we go back um, in, in, into the chamber. So th th thank you for that. Unless anybody else has any comments, I'll move to the next item. Okay, seeing none. Okay, uh, item seven is an update on the appointment of the tenant seat to the Arlington Housing Authority. Uh, Attorney Heim has a uh, presentation on this. Thank you, Mr. DeCourcy. Um, as the board will see in its uh, reference materials, uh, we received some updated guidance regarding the first appointment of a tenant um, representative on the housing authority in a regular seat. The board may recall that you previously appointed Ms. Fiorella Padilla as a interim filling in a seat uh, that was left vacant by, I believe, uh, Richard Murray. But um, following the passage of uh, Chapter 358 of the Acts of 2020, there is now going to permanently be a tenant seat for the Housing Authority. The um, Short version of this is that because there was a vacancy, uh, the first step for the board is to provide a written notice of a vacancy to our local tenant organization. Um, the only thing that uh, within 10 day business days of May 15th, um, when the revisions of 120B take effect, I think that we can get working on it sooner than that. But basically, um, you wanna provide a notice to all your tenants associations. And there was a point in the memo that I had not yet clarified with DHCD. Um, it's a little bit ambiguous. Four out of our five housing authority properties have a tenants association and one doesn't. My recommendation would be um, to send the notice, the formal notice to the tenant organizations that do exist for the four properties and then send a notice to all tenants of the remaining property that doesn't yet have a tenant association. I think the irony of it is, if I have this correct, um, I had cited the Monotony Manor as an example of a tenant association, but I, I think my understanding is that that's the only property where there's not a tenant association. I'll let any member of the board correct me if I'm wrong on that. But so again, I would recommend a hybrid system where you're just sending a notice to the tenants association to nominate uh, folks that they would like to be considered by this board. There's actually a formal document that folks should fill out and file with the town clerk. That'll be part of the notice. Um, and then I would also send a notice directly to all the households within the housing authority uh, complex that does not have a tenant association, just to make sure that everybody feels like they were given an opportunity to um, put themselves out as candidates to the select board. And it's also particularly important because I think your current interim uh, does not reside in a um, in a property where there's a local tenants organization, if I remember correctly. The local tenants organizations will have up to 60 days to submit a list of two to five eligible tenants for appointment. Um, any individuals at the property that doesn't have a tenants organization can also uh, submit their interest to the town clerk in the same period. And then you will have to make an appointment following the 60 day period unless you don't receive a list of candidates. So um, just a few quick additional notes. Um, Ms. Badia can continue to occupy the seat B 
because um, the election is not what would ordinarily, the election is ordinarily what would fill a vacancy, but in this case it hasn't. So she can continue to serve until this um, seat is occupied through this new process. And um, secondly, uh, an eligible tenant doesn't necessarily have to be a tenant within the specific um, local tenant organization. I, I think that's probably what will logically happen for a lot of these folks, but um, the eligibility to uh, serve on the housing authority is a little bit broader than that. So uh, again, you should be looking for two to five nominations from each one of your local tenant organizations. And then anybody who basically wants to be nominated who uh, lives in the one property that doesn't have a tenant organization uh, after that 60 day period from, from that May 15th date, you'll essentially come back and vote on who you'd like to serve as the uh, first tenant member. The terms are for five years. There's a little bit of a quirk right now in terms of how long that seat that's currently occupied by Ms. Medea is set to run. Um, we're seeing two competing records. One record says that it expires next year. There's another record apparently that the state has that says it expires in 2023. I'm not really sure how that happened, but um, we'll sort it out with the state, obviously, between now and, and, and when you take a vote. So if anybody has any questions, um, again, uh, I don't necessarily think you need to take a vote tonight, but I just wanted to outline and update the process and, and, um, and, and note that you know, we can go ahead and start getting working on sending out notices so that folks who are interested um, can either uh, try to apply through their tenant organization or can apply directly. Thank you, Attorney Heim. I'll turn it to the board now. Mr. Diggins? Um, I just have some curiosity questions. You know what, Mr. Heim? I'll call and, and talk with you about them. You know, so thank you. Okay, uh, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Just a question for, for Mr. Heim. Um, so if I understand your comments and your memo correctly, uh, if Ms. Badia wanted to, to solicit reappointment, uh, another one of the tenants organizations could nominate her if they so desired and she could and she'd be eligible to serve? That's right. So a local tenants organization could nominate her. She could frankly nominate her herself because I, I think, and I, forgive me if I get this wrong, but I'm pretty sure she lives in one of the properties that does not have a local tenants organization. So either way, she can oh. be nominated. All right, thank you. Uh, no further questions. Okay, thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and thank you, Attorney Heim, for providing us the information in the two footnote annotations, which still kind of <laughs> leaves us up in the air in terms of this appointment. Even though it's a five-year appointment, it's a 2022, it's a 2023. I will leave it to Learned Council um, to sort of hash that out. And uh, my only comment would be, I do want to say, uh, in terms of Ms. Bedelia, uh, who is a monotomy manor, um, um, who has been working a lot um, as our colleague, with our colleague, uh, Nick Metropolis, in terms of organizing the Monotony Manor Association and getting them um, formally organized. My only comment and or qu actually question to, uh, through the chair, um, to Attorney Heim would be, I understand there's 60 day uh, time increments that kick in in terms of notice, 60 days to get names back. Um, and I understand that once it gets back to the select board, because I'd like to A, put to rest the question is, is this till 2022, 2023, or 2026? And you're gonna get back to us on that. But when it comes before the select board and that 60 day period kicks in, I'd like to, if my colleagues agree on the select board, resolve this in the most expeditious way that we can. So are we bound to 60 days and or understanding we have up to 60 days? What is the most feasible recommendation to do it in the necessary time course, but sooner rather than later? Uh, Mr. Mr. Chair, so yeah, first of all, uh, Mrs. Mahan, I, <laughs> I agree with you. It's, it's unusual for me to receive information from the housing authority and from the town clerk that has different uh, dates for when the term expires. It will be a full five-year term after the expiration of the of the current uh, uh, current vacancy, whether it's in 2022 or 2023. But in any event, 
I think the only real time period that we need to worry about is if we get all these notices out right away um, so that on May 15th, those notices are to those tenants organizations and to those tenants, um, they need, they're required by law to have 60 days to get you nominations. And then after that, you can proceed as fast as you want. I think the idea is for them to have a little time to sort of develop their process for who they want to nominate. Um, and it might take a little bit of time that first time around. So that's the only real um, time frame that I'm sort of concerned about. If you get your um, notice out to everybody right away, we have to give them 60 days to get nominations to you. And then after that period, if on the 61st day you've got nominations and you're ready to go, or they all confirm, I mean, I, I can check on this. I'm kind of a little worried. I don't want to push it too far, but it, if everybody gets you their nominations, maybe we can move faster than that. But I, I think that they're supposed to have a 60 day period um, in which to submit them. And then again, on that 61st day, if this select board is ready to go, uh, it doesn't have to be an overly complicated process and they don't dictate exactly what your process, to, this process has to be for considering those applicants. Thanks. Okay, thank you, Attorney Hyman. I guess I would leave it to the chair. Um, I think what I'm hearing is we need the 60 days for applications to be submitted. Um, but then when the next phase kicks in and it's select board, we have up to 60 days, um, whatever the chair thinks is the, the most amenable way to get this done. And if we need the 60 days, I understand, but I'd, I'm hoping it's more towards the other end. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Uh, Mr. Hurd. Um, I'll just say I want to thank Attorney Heim for the memo and the simplified version of the process. And I know it, although it sounds nice and concise, I know it took a while to get to that that memo because a lot of the regulations that have been come from the state on this issue have been a little murky and hard to dive through. So it was, it, it was confusing for a while. So I, I think we're seeing light at the end of the tunnel. But thank you for your work and trying to dive through the minutia on those. Um, and this all sounds good. You know, I know Ms. Badia has been doing a great job in the Housing Authority, so I certainly hope she will put her name in for consideration, but we'll see, you know, the full list of candidates that our tenants associations come up with and we'll go from there and it'll be good to finally put this process to bed. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Um, and I just have one or two questions for Attorney Heim. Uh, first one is just on the timing, because the act doesn't take effect until May 15th, any notices that we send will, as you say in the memo, will be after that date that if, if we issue them, is that correct? Um, I, I think that as, as long as the notice is made within that period, um, th that is the, the most conservative reading of it. If we sent them out before, frankly, Mr. Chair, um, as long as the local tenants organizations were in possession of them, I wouldn't feel too worried about it, but, but that, is, that is the most conservative reading, yes. Okay, and, and just one question, and we don't control this, but there is a, a waiver provision for the housing authority, and, and I think we need to move independently because we don't know whether they will be seeking that waiver process or not, but um, that we won't know that until after May 15th, is that right? That's right, I mean, I, I think, so Mr. Chair, if the local housing authority intend, if the Arlington Housing Authority intends to seek a waiver, um, I'd invite them to notify us so that they're letting us know that they don't want a, uh, or they don't need a tenant uh, appointed person through this process. Um, I have not heard anything. I don't think the board's office has yet to hear anything. So hopefully they would give us a heads up in advance of May 15th. Okay, great, thank you. All right, so for this, what we're probably going to be meeting every week through town meeting. So I think we can wait until maybe the 17th to, to have a vote to, to issue the notices. And maybe by that date, we'll have um, a better idea as to the term and, and whether there is going to be any waiver um, from, from the housing authority as well. OK, Understood. all right, great. OK, well, th thank you very much. Um, that one, again, I don't think we need to take a vote at this time. That was more of an update unless, well, what, why don't we move receipt of the, the report from Attorney Heim. Um, so if we could have a, a motion on that, um, Mr. Diggins. 
Um, I'll move proceed, and, and actually, I will ask one of one of my questions. Uh, uh, so, if uh, Ms. Medea were to go for it and, and get it, uh, then what would happen to her seat now? So, right now, uh, Mr. Chair, if I may. Sure. Thank you, Mr. Davis. Uh, her seat right now is like any other essentially holdover seat. Ordinarily, what happens when there's a vacancy? on the select board, the housing authority, the board of assessor, and, and any elected body, you uh, uh, would appoint alongside whatever board there was a vacancy on uh, an interim person until that position is filled. In this particular case, there's a slightly unusual circumstance because ordinarily the election is how that seat is filled. But because that seat is designated as the tenant seat and the process takes a long time we have to wait until the revised chapter 121B goes into effect. She essentially stays in that holdover status until a uh, successor to that vacancy is appointed. So that seat either has one or two years left on it. If it has one year left, by the time a successor, whether that's Ms. Badia or somebody else is appointed, there really won't even be a full year until the process Re, re, restarts again in um, in April. Um, if there's two years on, then it would be like a seat that would be occupied for a year and nine months. But all the terms are staggered out so that each five-year term, only one should be coming up each year. And that's where there's a little bit of disconnect, by the way. It's a little bit strange. No, we're not quite sure how it happened, but the housing authority seats don't seem to line up so that one is expiring each year. Okay, I got you. See, I wasn't seeing it as the designated tenant seat. I was just seeing us having replaced that seat me uh, with a person that happened to be a tenant, and, uh, and but now we're designating it as a tenant seat. So, okay, now I get it. Thank you very much. So, so yeah, and, um, I've moved it onwards. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Diggins. I missed that for a second. Yes, I'll second that. Thank you. Okay. Any, any further questions or comments? No, okay, uh, Mrs. Mahan, any further questions or comments? No, thank you, Mr. Chair. Okay, and Mr. Hurd? Nope. Okay, okay, well, we have a motion uh, to receive the report of Attorney Heim that's been made and seconded. Attorney Heim. Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmet? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, thank you. Mr. DeCourcy? Yes. Unanimous vote. Great, thank you. Okay, last item is new business. Uh, Attorney Heim? No, sir, thank you. Okay, Mr. Chapterline? No new business, thank you. Okay, Mr. Helmuth? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I do have one, one item. Um, I think most of the, many people in the community know that there was a fire at the Thai Moon restaurant a few days ago. And uh, I, I just wanna share some, some positive news. It's just one of the things that I love so much about this town is the generosity of our residents. Uh, this restaurant was beloved by many, uh, but something I didn't know was that they um, had donated hundreds of meals to Arlington Eats early on in the pandemic. And in recognition of that, a resident of the town three days ago uh, created a GoFundMe fundraiser for the restaurant to help them get back on their feet. And uh, I'm looking at it right now, and uh, they had a $10,000 goal, and the community has raised over $17,000 in just three days. And uh, I just think that speaks so well for the caring of the community and how we value our local businesses, especially those businesses which have been such good corporate citizens. So thank you. Great. Thank you, Mr. Helmuth. Um, Mr. Diggins. Uh, yes, one piece of new business is a request that at our next meeting that we uh, assign uh, or consider signing the uh, select board person that will uh, be on the Youth and Young Adult Advisory um, Study Committee. Uh, and so that's one reason I wasn't leaping at the Council on Aging because, because I, you know, who's going to be begging for that one? <laughs> so, so, so that's it, you know, so that we can then you know, get the ball rolling because it's kind of nice that this has come up early in town meeting. Uh, and so I want to really get some momentum going on this so that we can make some progress sooner rather than later. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mr. Diggins. Uh, Mr. Hurd. I think that should be an easy appointment for the chair. Um, yeah, I just want to mention, we talked about the event 
from Mason Conway on Friday, and we talked about Mason's heroism. But I do want to really thank the Arlington Fire Department and the Arlington Police Department, who were both there on Friday in full force. Um, Chief Kelly had talked about his about the fire safety programs that they have done in past years that they haven't been able to do for COVID, where they go into the schools and they talk to the the students about fire safety and certainly it worked in this instance. So I do want to thank the Arlington Fire Department and the Arlington Police Department um, for participating in the event. Thank you. That's it. Thank you, Mr. Hurd. Uh, Mrs. Mahan. Um, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just briefly, um, if I could, uh, through the chair and by the chair, um, as we all know, and most people probably have forgotten, the election was April 6th, um, the select board uh, we've done the payroll and it's been out for two or three weeks now. Um, and some of the election workers are calling because some people are literally living paycheck to paycheck, penny, nickel, dime, quarter. So if, if I could ask um, Mr. DeCourcy, our chair, um, to uh, speak or coordinate with Mrs. Kropalka and whatever venue you feel appropriate in contacting the town clerk's office to see if there's anything else we can do which I don't think there is, we've prepared the payroll, but sort of get um, a conversation in terms of um, where payroll is at right now and, and what we can tell our workers who are calling when they sh should anticipate um, receiving um, their re remuneration. So, and I'll be happy after the chair uh, to make the motion to suspend and reconvene this meeting. But if one of my other colleagues wanna do it, that's fine. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Hey, thank you, Mrs. Mahan. I, I will follow up with Mrs. Kripalka on that tomorrow morning on, on the payroll issue. Just a quick piece of new business. We, the Affordable Housing Trust Fund was created at the special town meeting back in November. There are trustees to the trust that are appointed by the select board. And uh, I, I spoke with Ms. Meyer in our office earlier this week, and she's going to pull together notification seeking um, putting it out there for people who are interested in, in being trustees. And, and that should be taking place hopefully over the next week or two. Once the expressions of interest come in, then we will talk about a procedure for the board to, to select the trustees. But I just want to make people aware of that. Um, that's all I have for new business. For the motion to adjourn, I'll turn to Mrs. Mahan. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd like to move that... Um, we suspend the select board meeting of May 3rd, 2021 and reconvene concurrently with the opening of the May 3rd, 2021 town meeting. And um, to that end, uh, the select board will remain in session um, during this and, and future town meetings. And our adjournment will also be concurrent with the uh, adjournment of the 2021 town meeting. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mrs. Mahan. Do we have a second? Second. Great, thank you, Mr. Hurd. Okay, we have a motion that's been made and seconded to adjourn. Uh, Attorney Heim? Mr. Hurd? Yes. Mr. Diggins? Yes. Mr. Helmet? Yes. Mrs. Mahan? Yes, see you at town meeting. Mr. Corsi? <laughs> yes. Great, thank you, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Yep. Yeah.